is faith? If we ask this question to a lot of people in the world today, they would probably say something like, your faith is how you practice your religion, whatever your religion may be. As believers in Jesus Christ, our definition for faith is found in God's word. The writer of Hebrews sums it up like this. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. In other words, our trust in God and our hope in him is proof of our faith. And faith is what makes life worth living. And faith is a foundation that we truly can build our lives upon. And when we read the Bible, the men and women of great faith in the Bible are the kind of people that you and I aspire to pattern our lives after today. So as believers, faith shapes our worldview. Our faith and trust in Christ informs who we are, what we think, what we believe, and how we act. So faith is not simply a philosophy for living. It's more than that. For faith to be faith, it must be lived out. For faith to be faith, it must be visible. It must somehow be tangible. It must be capable of being perceived and handled somehow and somehow touched and felt. For faith to be faith, it must be walked out day after day, one step at a time. James, the half-brother of Jesus, would certainly agree with these statements. He says to us, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? James is asking a rhetorical question here because he goes on to say, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by actions, is dead. So faith can be defined as trust in God that moves us to action. When you and I believe that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do and we respond to that truth with our actions, that, my friends, is faith. And when we have this kind of faith in God, a lived out faith, it certainly is a foundation that we can build our lives upon. Picture it this way. Faith is kind of like building a house. If I say that I have faith, but my faith is just a stack of boards with words on them, but I haven't done the heavy lifting of picking up these boards and then framing the structure of my life with words of faith, that turn into actions of faith, then my life really is kind of like a lumber yard with two by fours just lying around on the ground waiting to be picked up and used. But if on the other hand, I pick up these boards, board by board, one act of faith at a time and build them upon one another, if I frame the structure of my life with acts of faith, then my life becomes like a house of faith that has been built one act of faith at a time. We have an excellent carpenter in this church. His name is Chris Shepherd, And uh, Chris is a modest guy. But Chris and Sissy did all the wonderful work that we see out in our foyer. And uh, Chris and Sissy are going to help me demonstrate this point, okay? And so I called them and I said, well, you rig me up a, a house of faith. So here's our house right here. And uh, these boards represent our acts of faith that are going to frame our house. So Sissy is going to uh, give boards to Chris and that is going to become our house of faith. So let's use the faith chapter which is Hebrews chapter 11 to make this point, because all of the people who lived in um, chapter 11 that we read about, they lived out their faith and their faith was pleasing to God. And here's why, because their faith was lived out in action. So here we go. Are we ready? Okay. By an act of faith, Abel 
brought a bigger or a better sacrifice to God than Cain. And God noticed that Abel gave him his very best, and God approved of this act of faith. By an act of faith, Enoch walked and talked with God. And one day, God says, hey, we're closer to my house than your house. Why don't you just come and live with me? And Enoch skipped death completely because he just wanted to be wherever God was. And this act of faith was pleasing to God. By an act of faith, Noah built an ark in the middle of the dry land. The people thought he was crazy, but Noah chose to stand alone and obey God. And in the process, he found favor with God, and God approved of his faith. By an act of faith, Abraham said an unqualified yes to God by leaving his home with no idea where he was going, and he became a friend of God because he learned to trust God completely, and God blessed his faith. By an act of faith, Sarah became pregnant at an old age because she believed in God's promise. And from her barren womb came the nation of Israel, and God blessed her faith. By an act of faith, Isaac and Jacob both, I love this, they reached into the future and they blessed their families with God's blessing and favor. So God blessed them and their families with his favor. By an act of faith, Joseph prophesied the exodus of Israel. And think about this. Joseph made arrangements for his own burial. And God was with Joseph in a great way, and he honored him for his unwavering faith. By an act of faith, Moses turned his back on Egypt, and he chose a hard life with God's people. He became an instrument of God's power. He delivered the nation of Israel out of Egypt through the wilderness and led them to the promised land. And Moses experienced God's glory because of his faith. By an act of faith, Joshua led the Israelites around the walls of Jericho for seven days and the walls fell flat. God used Joshua to establish Israel in the land that he had promised to Abraham and Moses. And through his faith in God, Joshua conquered the land of Canaan and he possessed the promised land because his faith was pleasing to God. Now, these are just some of the men and women that are mentioned in the faith chapter. We've got a pretty good house of faith there, don't we? Can we give Chris and Sissy a hand? Thanks, guys. They just whipped that up. If I would have done that, it would have looked like a mess, but they did a great job on that. Here's the point. And here's why I wanted to give you something to look at this morning. Faith isn't a passive word that nods its head in Bible study. Faith is an active word that flexes its muscles. You see, faith is the hammer and the nail that puts up one board at a time and builds a life of faith. Faith is the heavy lifting that you and I do to express our trust and our hope in God. Think about your life for a moment. If our lives were broken down into acts of faith, what would those sentences sound like? For instance, if I said to you, fill in this blank, by an act of faith I have, what would the rest of that sentence be? For me, some of those sentences might sound like this. By an act of faith, I left the music business and became a music pastor when I was 38 years old. A lot of people told me I was crazy. By an act of faith, a year later, I started studying for the ministry. My wife had something to say about that. She was like, I didn't marry a pastor. I married a musician. <laughs> By an act of faith, when I was 45 years old, I started a second career. Here's the point. The acts of faith that involve the biggest risk 
are also the acts of faith that provide the greatest reward. Let me say that again, because I'm not sure that we believe this. The acts of faith that involve the biggest risk are also the acts of faith that provide the greatest reward. Edith and I, we enjoyed being musicians. It was a whole lot of fun. But let me tell you, the spiritual rewards of being in the pastorate are much, much greater, and they have much greater eternal value. I'd like to give you a homework assignment. I would like to challenge you sometime this week to take your message notes home and check out your faith thermometer and ask yourself the question, what are the acts of faith that I have engaged in and what has been the result? I believe if you'll do that, it will be a great blessing to you. Now, I think we all know that we need to live by faith, but sometimes it's hard to put faith into action. So this morning, as we wrap up our series from the life of Joshua, I want us to look at how he put his faith into action and how he responded when his faith was tested. Joshua is one of the best examples in the Bible for how to do the heavy lifting when it comes to faith. So when my faith is tested, write this down, I must remember God brought me here. When my faith is tested, I must remember God brought me here. Think about your life right now and then say to yourself very specifically, God brought me here. For me, this is such a comforting thought because I have a tendency to think, you know, if I would have done this differently or if I would have responded differently or if I would have worked harder or planned better, if I would have just been smarter, then I wouldn't be where I am today. But church, we need to stop wasting our time thinking these useless thoughts. We need to stop wasting our time listening to these lies that are coming from Satan because the truth of your life and the truth about my life is no matter the circumstance or situation we find ourselves in today at this very moment, my friends, God brought us to where we are today. So picture this. Here's Joshua. He is the new leader for Israel. He is getting ready to cross the Jordan River and enter into the promised land. But Joshua is up against a circumstance that goes way beyond his ability. When Joshua was looking at the Jordan River at flood stage, when Joshua was looking at that, look at that picture. He probably thought to himself, I didn't plan very well, did I? Maybe, maybe I didn't hear from God after all. Maybe, maybe we're supposed to wait and cross the Jordan at another time. What's going to happen if we all drown in the Jordan River? Maybe this isn't God's plan. Maybe we're not supposed to be here. But church, we know in hindsight that God brought Joshua and the Israelites to the Jordan River at the exact time and at the exact time moment that he wanted them there. God brought them there. It was no mistake. They were exactly where they were supposed to be at that moment in time. And here is what we read in Joshua chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan, while the water flowing down to the sea of the Raba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. So let's put this in perspective. For 40 years, God had led the children of Israel through the wilderness 
with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So God's presence and God's guidance had been a consistent part of their everyday life. And so here they stand at the Jordan when it is at its highest level and when it was the most difficult and treacherous to cross. And God miraculously led Joshua and the Israelites across it. So here's the question. Wouldn't it have been easier for them to wait until the time when the Jordan was a sleepy little stream and in their own strength and with their own ingenuity, they could have crossed it? The answer is yes. But here's the thing. If they would have crossed the Jordan on their own timetable and in their own strength, they would have missed the miracle. Church, how many miracles have we missed out on because we have chosen to do things our way rather than God's way? I submit to you this morning that God purposefully brings us to overwhelming circumstances in our life to show us his glory, to show us his power, and to show us what our faith can produce if we are willing to do the heavy lifting. James says to us, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. James is saying to us when you're facing the Jordan River, when you're dealing with the trials and the difficulty in your life, hey, that is just a normal part of our Christian experience. So don't fall apart when you're going through tough times. Instead, church, James invites us to a paradigm shift. He says, count it all joy. Now, the word count here means to evaluate. So James is saying, think about the situation, evaluate the situation that you are now facing. And here's what you need to do. You need to develop a new and improved attitude toward it. Face it with joy. Why? Because the impossible situations that we face, the difficult times that we go through, they have a purpose in our life. At church, that purpose is to mature us and produce spiritual perseverance in us. A good example of this is, is an athlete. A serious athlete looks forward to physical and mental challenges. That's me on this side of it. <laughs> And Brent Williams is the other guy. <laughs> but think about it. A serious athlete, they look forward to the physical and mental challenges because they know what heavy lifting and hard work will produce in them. Think of it this way, church. If God never allowed us to go through tough times and our Christian life was all lived on easy street, Think about this. We would go through our life untested and underdeveloped. God specifically brings us to places where we have to develop our spiritual muscles so that we have the stamina and the endurance to keep walking with him. So the reason why we are to count it all joy when we go through trials, when we are facing our personal Jordan River is because it is in our trials and through our trials that we learn to depend on God and trust him. Think of it this way. Faith that is tested becomes genuine faith. Faith that is tested becomes rugged faith. Faith that is tested becomes uncompromising faith. And church, this is the kind of faith that we need today. This is a time for faith. You and I need a faith that stands at the edge of whatever Jordan River that we're facing. And we say to God, God, this Jordan River is at flood stage. This looks impossible, but I know that with you, nothing is impossible. Amen. 
So I'm asking you, God, to hold back the floodwaters and let me and let my family walk through this trial to the other side. I am asking you to part my Jordan River and show me your power and show me your glory because I believe, God, that you brought me to this place and this time. So I am trusting you and I'm choosing to step out in faith. And this brings us to our next point. When our faith is being tested, church, we have to remember that God wants me to get my feet wet. Write that down. God wants me to get my feet wet. When we studied the book of Joshua, the way that God worked with Joshua was, if you will, then I will. If you do this, then I'll do that. And that's really how faith works. God says to Joshua, if you'll march around the city and you will blow the trumpets and you'll shout, if you'll take that action of faith, God says, hey, I'll, I'll do the rest. I'll make the walls fall down. Here's what we just read. As soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge and their feet touched the water's edge. That was their action of faith. Faith. They, they had to get their feet wet. The water from the upstream stopped flowing. Now, Crosspoint, I think that this might be where our faith breaks down a lot of times. We have a tendency to say, okay, God, I know that you brought me here. I know that only you can see me through this, and I know this difficult time is for my good. But church, I think a lot of times this is where you and I tend to stall in the faith department. Think about the Israelites here. The Israelites didn't walk up to the Jordan River and say, okay, God, work a miracle. They didn't just walk up to the river and say, okay, work a miracle. What did they do? They stepped into the water. Let's unwrap that a bit more. They stepped into turbulent water. You see, humanly speaking, what they did did not make any sense. But because God said to do it, they put their feet to it and they got their feet wet. They put their faith into action. It's like Peter. Peter had to get out of the boat to walk on the water. I was thinking this week, you know, Peter could have lived his whole life and said, hey, guys, remember that time that I could have walked on water? But, oh, yeah, I didn't get out of the boat. Wouldn't be a very good story, would it? You see, our tendency, let's be honest, is to want God to do the miracles and to take the step of faith both. But church, that's not how faith works. Faith works in a relationship with God where he says to us, if you will, then I will. The miracle of the Jordan River parting happened once they stepped into the water, which teaches us an important lesson, church. God delivers us and God works miracles for us when and only when we take the initiative and step out in faith with him. I think about the amazing grace ministries here at this church. You know, Lynn Parker and her group of ladies and men who have joined now could have said, you know, this is really a horrible time to try to do this. You know, people have COVID. Why don't we do it a more convenient time? You know, let's, let's put this off and do it later. But Amazing Grace Ministries felt like God wanted them to do it and do it now. So they stepped out in faith and God has rewarded their faith. And because they put their faith in action, God has blessed this ministry. Same thing with Kids Connect and Creator Space and, and Christmas Lane. You see, all four of these ministries this year were started in spite of COVID, but they have flourished because we felt like God wanted us to do these things. And because we chose to get our feet wet, he honored our faith. Amen. 
You know, I was just talking with Chris and Sissy and, and we were talking yesterday when we were talking about how to construct this wall. And, and Sissy said, you know, this has been a horrible year for the, year, for the world, but this has been a really good year for Cross Point Family Church. Do you know why? It's because we've chosen to walk by faith and get our feet wet. And I think that deserves a yay God. One, two, three. Yay, yay God. God. Think about your life right now. In, in what area of your life would God be saying to you, you need to get your feet wet? What area might God be saying, hey, you need to get your feet wet? One more quick thought. When my faith is being tested, I have to remember to keep my focus on God. Write that down. When my faith is being tested, I have to re remember to keep my focus on God. So here's Joshua and the children of Israel. They are standing at the edge of the Jordan River. The current is strong. The water's deep and the river is pretty wide. Sounds like a song, right? <laughs> But Joshua's instruction to the officials was perfect. He said to them, look at this. He says, tell the people to keep their eyes on the Ark of the Covenant. What was the Ark of the Covenant? The presence of God. Here's what we read. He says, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. I read that and it's like, oh, wow, this is exactly where we are right now. Church, we are living in an unprecedented time. And we are trying to navigate through waters we have never been in before. I think to some degree we can identify with the children of Israel here. But here's what we've got to remember. Our focus needs to be on God just like their focus was on God. You see, church, if you and I, if, if we look at the floodwaters around us, we will lose heart. If we look at the Jordan that we're facing and, and it's deep, it's swirling, it's treacherous and it's impossible for us to cross on our own. If that becomes our focus, we will lose faith. So we need to focus on God. We need to focus on God's promises that are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. We need to focus on the success he has promised us if we obey his word. Success is mentioned a whole lot in the book of Joshua, and it was contingent upon obedience. Here's the recipe for success. Faith that causes to obey equals success. If we practice a faith and obedience, that will eventuate into success. We need to focus on the blessings he promised to us and to our families. If we meditate and stay in his word. And church, we need to focus on our relationship with him. Listen to what Martin Luther said. Martin Luther said, I know not the way he leads me. But well, do I know my guide. Isn't that good? I know not the way he leads me, but well, do I know my guide. You see, faith really comes down to a fixation and a focus on God. This is what made Joshua such a great leader. He kept his focus on God. And that is how he lived out his faith. And church, this is how we live out our faith today. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, you have reminded us today that faith can be defined as trust in you that moves us to action. We want to be men and women of action. We don't want to just speak words of faith. We want a faith that is lived out. 
Would you help us to remember that you brought us to where we are today? Lord, there are some who maybe hear that sentence and say, oh boy, I'm struggling to embrace that. But Lord, I truly believe that you brought us to where we are today. You either orchestrated the events of our life or you allowed what has happened to us to happen to us. You have brought us one way or the other to where we are today. And you want to teach us to trust you in spite of the Jordan we are facing. Help us to remember we've got to get our feet wet. We can't just talk about faith. We've got to put it in our actions. And I pray, Lord, that you would cause us to walk in faith and obedience so that we would know the success that you have for us. That's not a name it and claim it success. I'm talking about success according to your word. May we walk in faith and obedience so that we succeed in what it is you have called us to do. Help us to remember to focus on Jesus. We don't have to know where you are leading us. We have to just be like a little child who walks up to their father or mother or grandpa or grandma and they just put their hand in the hand of the adult and they trust them completely. Would you help us to do that? We don't have to know where you're leading. We just want to put our hand in yours. Help us to focus on the relationship we have with you because you are the author and you are the finisher of our faith. Make us men and women of faith today. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Let's go walk in faith. Amen. Amen.